So good afternoon, everybody. Today we're going to talk about a very, very important and a common topic about precocious puberty in boys. And we'll make a basic understanding of the overall process. We'll then talk about a very interesting case and the discussions thereof. And then we'll talk a bit about assessment management and other implications in that regards. So how do we go forward in terms of investigations? So the most important investigation clearly is testosterone which will of course be high in most cases and LH. So always look at testosterone and LH in parallel. And your case shows that if your testosterone is high and LH is pubertal, but it's just borderline, it is still peripheral. It is not central to begin with in that regards. Of course, FSH will have some value, but I would say LH and testosterone are the most important. Usually in boys, we don't need to do a GNRH test in most cases except for these triggered cases. Now, in your case, we could have thought, okay, it's 0.21. Let's see how much it is rising. But it wouldn't have changed your management. So, in that situation, you might have thought that in that perspective. So, basal more than 0.2 or 0.3. Or you with GNRH and UCL level, which is going above 5, this becomes significant in that regards. And we are now going more towards a single ratio of 5 rather than a ratio in that perspective. But both criteria are there in that setting. Now, MRI, any boy with central precocious puberty, first case tells us if you don't do it, they, that's like criminal. You have to do an MRI in all boys and girls less than six years of age, which is absolutely important. Adrenal cause, you have to obviously do a CT scan. In a big warning, you may miss adrenal carcinoma. So do a very careful abdominal examination. Ultrasound will miss. I have also missed on ultrasound and then on CT, we found that so it's very important to consider CT scan in that setting. Of course, 17 OHP, and if the blood pressure is high, think of a 11 hydroxidase that will become relevant from that perspective. And in that regard, it will become important from that situation. And bone age, of course, will tell you how it is progressing. So if we now go into the approach, the first step is to confirm precocity. And if you are looking at precocity, we're mainly talking about pubic hair development. If the penile size is documented to be very increased, testo is high, bone age is advanced, then you do gonadotrophins. If gonadotrophins are high, this is central, you have to do an MRI, no confusion. If it's peripheral, low, do adrenal imaging. Now, this is important. Often people miss that. Do adrenal imaging. If you find a tumor, you will identify. If it's uh, enlarged adrenal, it is usually CH. And if it is normal, then you think of rarer causes like HCG producing tumor, or then finally you will think of a LHCG receptor genetic study. But most cases will come here. You will think of a high MRI head, or you will see an enlarged adrenal 17 OHP high like this case. So this is a classical presentation. Now, Dr. Pratik, if you can just quickly go through the cases uh, for discussion. So what do you think? So we have a boy who has uh, high testicular volume and HPL is also increased. So I would consider a central precocious puberty for this. Yeah. So then uh, gonadotropin levels were done and LH is 2.2, FSH 3.2 and testic uh, Testo is high. high. So suggesting a central precocious puberty. Uh, so then, yes, of course, MRI head was. So, what was the MRI showing, Manoj? What do you see here? Uh, early age person. No, what is the MRI showing? <laughs> you, you go by age or you go by MRI picture? Cyan? Yes. So, Where is the hematoma? So hematoma is basically normal tissue in abnormal region. So if you see, you are, there is a hypothalamic tissue not in the hypothalamic area. So this is a hypothalamic hematoma. So this will be an early onset presentation. And typically, you will what will you do now? You will send to neurosurgeon. There is no role of surgical intervention. Only if there is refractory seizures and other features you will think of. But that is not common with this location of the hypothalamic hematoma. Seven year old, uh, yeah. So, this was the case we presented in the first case, and this again highlights the importance that if we had looked carefully, we might have found cafe oil spots, we might have found neurofibromas, but forget about that. Any central precautious puberty, get an MRI, otherwise, you will land up like this situation. So, this is very, very important. A 
seven year old boy with early puberty. Now, what we see here is being, which is quite different from the first kids. Here we have an exaggerated growth of the penile, penile length, and the testicular volume is small compared to the penile length, so which is more suggestive of precocious puberty, uh, peripheral precocious puberty. So in this case, of course, gonadotropin deviations are done, which showed which were low. Uh, LH abscess were probably low, and then adrenal imaging was done, which showed a lesion. And of course, in this LH came 0.1, FSH was 1.1, testo was 200. So, so you have a large adrenal with peripheral this thing. So obviously, the next step will be 17 OHP. This is just like at this case, which was we just discussed. You carry forward. So in large adrenal, we did 17 OHP and it came very high. So there's over 21 hydroxyl deficiency. Now, this child was started on hydrocortisone to hydrocortisone, and six months later, it was noted that the testicular volume enlarged to a pubertal age and bone age was 11 years. So, and testosterone actually came down from the previous level. So, this is just like what Cyan had been discussing a classical case of secondary triggered precocious puberty. So, keep your eyes and ear open. So, normal 17 OHP, high testo means central precocity. And then, uh, because uh, there was doubt of whether it's central or not, a stimulated level was done, which was 8. So, this was cent uh, triggered central precocity. A 5-year-old boy with early puberty. And here, if we see, the, uh, the penile length is much more than the testicular volume. And here again, gonadotropin levels were done. LH 0.1, FSH 1.2. And then, uh, uh, with, uh, adrenal images were normal. And then... So here, what we see here is the testicular volume is not as small as the previous image. It is intermediate size. So then uh, HCG levels were done, which were high, and then a CT chest and uh, imaging showed that there was a lesion suggestive of a HCG producing tumor. So if you have anybody as discussed with the intermediate size, this thing, you have to do that. And this was a classical case. We discussed the second case. Very importantly, adrenal imaging was very important. You may think, okay, we can do 17 OHP first and then imaging, which is okay. But don't forget about imaging and imaging has to be CT. Don't go by ultrasound. Otherwise, you will miss this adrenal carcinoma, which is there. A three-year-old boy with early puberty. Height is 106 centimeters. Weight is 14 kgs. Uh, SPL is 9 centimeters. And pubic hair is 3. But on the other hand, testicular volume is just 3 mm. So here we have SPL which is high, cubic hair which is high, but testicular volume is still pre preferred. Now gonadotropin levels are done, which is as expected. LH is suppressed and testosterone is high, so it's a peripheral precocious puberty. CT abdomen was normal. So the next step is basically 17 OHP was normal and HCG levels were normal. And what is remaining is the LHCG receptor, any lytic cell dependent. Term. So this testicular volume is slightly higher than what you will see for peripheral precocious puberty. So again, this is indicating towards a possibility of a intermediate size and HCG or a LH dependent cause. So testotoxicosis because it's too early. If you wait for a few years, TB will go up a bit. But this is a classical presentation. So Dr. Bodhita is asking how reliably the height predictions are done in these studies. So I think uh, we have to agree that these height predictions are not very reliable. They tend to overestimate. But if we look at the final height, which is in the range of the parents, I think that's a good enough parameter to find in that regards. There is, of course, an issue if you have an advanced bone age, you can't really rely on the prediction. But of course, if your bone age is 13 and your height is around 8 years, you are very compromised. And if you reach a normal height, I'll be very, very happy. Now, according to uh, algorithm, you suggested adrenal CT for all PPP. I think this is a bit of a, uh, it's, it's a very important point with Dr. Rajesh has raised. I said the second option is that you can do 17 OHP. If 17 OHP is decisively high, you should uh, do that. But sometimes I've seen is that you can have high 17 OHP in adrenal carcinoma also. This is important because it is producing a large number of steroidogenic products. Your 17 OHP may be falsely high. So if your 17 OHP is like your case, it's like 20,000 nanogram per DL, be happy. You don't need to do imaging. We did not do an imaging in this case. So I agree that you do 17 OHP if it is very high, avoid imaging. But if the 17 OHP is borderline, think of a possibility of adrenal carcinoma. How will a girl with LHCG receptor activation present? Now, I think this is a question which we've discussed a lot in terms of physiology. So LH has very limited role as far as pubertal development in girls is concerned. Its major role is ovulation. 
So LHCG receptor defect will present with normal puberty and anovulation. LHCG receptor activation will cause nothing in a girl. I don't know whether it will cause more problems in terms of a high LH state causing a mild hyperandrogenism, but not in the setting of a precocious puberty in that regard. So that's why HCG producing tumor or a testotoxicosis equivalent. There is no overtoxicity in that uh, regards, so to speak, in that uh, perspective. So I think these were a few questions. Uh, we'll see if there are any other question. So there is a question from... Uh, Dr. Purnima, when do we decide to add prednisolone? So I think that was more in regards to uncontrolled CA. So if you have somebody whose final height is complete and yet you are developing testicular uh, tumors, uh, which are their adrenalous tumors, you can think of a more potent steroid like prednisolone in that perspective, but not before the final height is achieved. Dr. Sanju is asking, should fine, lightly pigmented hair in mustache area, upper arms, back of trunk in a female, considered significant for hyperandrogenism? No, it's very important. It has to be coarse, thick, pigmented hair. So I would not count them because otherwise you will unnecessarily start working in a large number of cases where a workup is not required. Dr. Candy is asking, how does hypothyroidism cause pre peripheral precocity? So hypothyroidism is not really causing peripheral precocity in boys. If you have very high TSH, it, the TSH will act on the FSH receptor. So Tolly cells will become bigger. So testicular size will increase. So they may present with high testicular size with no other features of puberty. So it's the opposite or it's a mirror image of uh, the von Weyck grumbach syndrome in which you have a large ovarian cyst with uh, development with again puberty is not happening. Now, Dr. Ronke is talking about, explain again how glucocorticoid will cause precocious puberty. Yes, so this is an, again an important question. What we are saying is that if you have congenital adrenal hyperplasia, it is predominantly the adrenals which is producing the testosterone. Now, because of this very high level of testosterone, the pituitary is suppressed. LH, FSH levels are low. But the bone age is increased. So the body is ready for precocity. It is not entering precocity because of the suppression by testosterone. As soon as we give glucocorticoid, the suppression goes off and suddenly the pubertal progression increases. So by giving treatment, you may trigger or you may, let's say, <coughs> unravel the precocious puberty which was hidden. This is what will happen. It's not that it is causing, it was already there. It is manifesting once you start steroids in that regards. I think uh, there's another question from Dr. Rajesh. At what time of the day high sun dose should be given, morning or evening? So there is the lot of studies which say whether you give higher dose at night, higher dose at morning, there is no difference at all. Generally, if you give it two to three times, uh, ideally three times a day will be better. Equal dosage has got equal effect. Because remember, it's not that you're releasing the hormone. It's going to the SA, the CBG, the cortisol binding globulin, it is releasing gradually. So it's not that diurnal variation will have a huge impact. So you give it uh, three times a day is the best with equal distribution. Uh, I think uh, reverse DEXA use has no advantage. This was tried earlier, but this is now clearly of no role, Dr. Pankaj. It's not recommended anymore. So it's not very beneficial in that regards, but yes, Dexamethasone may be beneficial over hydrocortisone or prednisolone in controlling hyperandrogenism, particularly in adolescent girls who have got very high testosterone levels. So are there, if there are no other questions, <coughs> we can probably... Uh, which general analogs in CPP? So again, uh, luprolide or triptorolin, both are the good options which are available. We have a look at our website to look at the various parameters and explore our courses for postgraduates and our application also, which is there and the books which are available. So I think we'll close down in terms of the overall uh, presentations here. We'll see if there are any particular questions uh, which are there and we'll carry forward from that uh, in that regard. So.